Hello everyone, welcome to a special Women's Day podcast by Onrik ITR. First of all, I would like to wish everyone a very happy Women's Day. Today we have with us a very special guest, Ms. Kanchan Dvivedi. She has served in the Indian Air Force for over five years and then completed her MBA in Finance and Marketing from California State University. Post her MBA, she worked in the corporate sector for about eight years with joint corporations like Tech Mahindra, Infosys, etc. She's the start. She's the founder of startups like Longini and Inspire. She also received the Women's Super Achiever Award 2019 by World HRD Congress. Welcome to the show, ma'am. We are delighted and honored to have you here with us today. Thank you, Arushi. It's a pleasure to be here for, with uh, the IIT Lurki uh, podcast. And, uh, you know, I hope, uh, you know, we'll have a, a great conversation today. Sure, ma'am. Uh, so since it's Women's Day today, uh, there is a famous quote by Meghan Markle that I would like to share. It says that when, women's are when women are given the right tools to succeed, they can create incredible futures not only for themselves, but also for those around them. So carrying this sentiment forward, we'll start today's discussion. Um, so ma'am, while I was reading your profile, uh, I learned that you were a part of Indian Air Force from 1997 to 2002. And uh, it was rare for women to be a part of Indian Armed Forces, especially back in the 90s and early 2000s. So what inspired you to join IAF? Yes, uh, Arushi, yeah. and uh, I would also like to wish all the uh, you know folks who are listening to the podcast or watching it a very happy International Women's Day and uh, urge everyone to embrace equity. And with that positive note, uh, I'm going to share with you, you know, why did I uh, join the Air Force? I think uh, around the time, and this was uh, quite some time back, many years back, um, when I joined the Air Force, uh, I uh, one of the primary motivation was uh, uh, I had grown up watching my dad, who was in the army, uh, wear his uniform and, uh, you know, uh, attend multiple occasions and functions as, as a family with him. And uh, it was a great life that I had as an army kid. So, uh, plus uh, the, uh, you know, the if you look at the, uh, uh, the salary level or uh, the kind of uh, comfort, uh, uh, you know, which is uh, there for uh, an army family or defense forces family was something that uh, I had grown up with and I really liked. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, the... Uh, feeling uh, because you've grown up in an environment where there are uh, you know people saying Jai Hind every day they're just devoted to serving the motherland they're facing hardships so seeing uh, that kind of an atmosphere I was definitely motivated to serve uh, my motherland uh, which is India and all of these factors combined came together and uh, I decided to apply to the Air Force and yes, this was a time when uh, very few women were in the Air Force. Uh, we were amongst the pioneering batches of uh, women officers uh, in the Air Force. And um, uh, these were like, those were amazing times. Uh, there was so much to learn. We were experimenting with, uh, you know, uh, how, we, uh, you know, uh, with basically pushing the, uh, you know, whatever the limits had been set up for us, we were trying to understand um, and also trying to make the, the males who were working with us, trying to uh, make them understand us, how to work with us. I must say uh, that kudos to the Air Force uh, that they have, uh, you know, managed, the forces have managed this transition uh, well, uh, that uh, they have encouraged women folk right from the start. Uh, so, and there is actually so much to learn as a, you know, officer. I wouldn't even say a woman officer. We were treated at, uh, at par. Uh, and uh, uh, we learned quite a lot of things from our seniors, like, you know, time management, uh, like how to manage with scarce resources, how to be flexible. You have to be adaptive so you can uh, take on the uh, worst of the challenges and, uh, you know, and uh, uh, be prepared to also enjoy uh, to, to the max because, uh, you know, life in the forces is very tough. So... Mm -hmm. 
uh, people like to take each day as it comes so you know there are times when your life is also threatened so uh, then then you also realize how your life is precious so uh, these are life lessons actually which i don't think i will learn anywhere else and so which is why i'm really thankful to my time in the forces and uh, uh, arushi i will also share with you i'm using all those uh, you know qualities that i yeah. hold or uh, some of the things or the experience that i had in the air force to help me in my entrepreneurial life so i feel that i'm a better entrepreneur today because i i'm ready to take on many challenges and uh, i am flexible i'm adaptive i i love sticking to time uh, and uh, but at the same time uh, i'm also flexible about uh, you know if somebody else is not able to uh, you know uh, catch up to the standards i've set because uh, it, it is also important to be empathetic so uh, i would say uh, uh, my time in the air force has uh, you know has helped me throughout my life and uh, um, i am very proud of having served my country right um that sounds wonderful um so any particular incident that you remember while you were there that has just stuck with you any challenges that you faced uh, as a woman while you were there that you would like to share with us mm, yeah there were there would have been many instances um so i think uh, one particular struck with me i think uh, uh, because uh, uh, this had to do with uh, you know the uh, basically uh, you know you uh, are exposed to such dangers in uh, uh, you know in in terms of your uh, you know uh, work life that you wouldn't be exposed to uh, in a corporate life so for example you know uh, i go back to a time when uh, you know i was in the air traffic control tower and i was controlling and i had this uh, civil um, helicopter basically uh, come in and uh, you know so they were uh, actually uh, doing a sortie and uh, suddenly they developed some complications so because of which uh, uh, so uh, typically you know a, a young officer would really panic and would uh, you know um, kind of uh, get scared or you know be uh, not be so reassuring but when it happened uh, with me and the pilot who was communicating an emergency and also um uh, i uh, then uh, try to you know help him out on the rt itself and i try to basically send the we uh, we uh, like i activated the fire control to go position themselves uh, very close to where that a uh, helicopter was supposed to land and um uh, you know we were basically uh, on the rt and we were trying to see how we can help this uh, particular uh, pilot out and thankfully the pilot was able to land that uh, helicopter uh, without any um, major damage to the aircraft mm-hmm. or or to himself so that particular day you know was uh, you know of course i was i was scared uh, for 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 the pilot uh, and you know that the accident would could, could happen but at the same time i didn't leave the rt i was there uh, the uh, you know basically the controls i didn't leave the controls and uh, uh, you know uh, and i tried to help to the extent possible which i could mm-hmm. um, so so those are you know some of the uh life changing experiences that you go through uh, which you wouldn't find in the uh, you know uh, civil atmosphere and maybe the time uh, i was in the trenches with the uh, with uh, let's say uh, you know my uh, one of the i think the uh, uh, senior amen so at that point in time the kargil war had been declared and we were uh, in these bunkers uh, you know underground so and we were on 24 hours duty so um, you know so those are some of the situations which basically teach you to take life as it comes and you know not be not be scared and jumpy and mm-hmm. panic and you know give up and you know so because you can give two reactions you can completely um, you know lose it or you can say that okay uh, you know this is a bad situation here and uh, the best way to face it is by actually facing it by right. you know not 
uh, screaming, shouting, and you know, giving any those any of those uh, reaction, and try to see whatever best next you can do. Right. And then rest is rest is just fate. I mean, you can't really fight fate beyond a point. So yeah. so those are you know some of the uh, you know skills which uh, you know military teaches you, mm. and uh, you know, uh, basically you know helps you with facing your life challenges. Right. Oh, it sounds like you learned some really good lessons while you were there. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, amazing experiences. Uh, but then you know, going on to the next phase in my life, um, yeah, the the uh, you know, which is in the corporate. Uh, so I was able to move to the corporate because uh, you know, I, I did my MBA at California State University in marketing and finance. So. Uh, that was in again an interesting time. Uh, I was uh, you know suddenly in US, which was very different from the uh, Indian environment that I had grown up in always. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, this was also MBA, uh, and this was uh, you know very different from the defense forces. And suddenly from working, you get back to student life. Study. But I was really yeah. But what what was helpful was uh, my stint in the Air Force because. Uh, after you work a lot of the terms in MBA you get to understand so you know typically people do MBA first and then go on to do uh, to work so that is you know another way to do it you know because you obviously you get a fillip in terms of the kind of job prospects that you have Mm -hmm. but here I did the opposite I first went to the forces build up my base Mm -hmm. um, and then had an understanding of uh, a work uh, work life basically how do you deal with people there are so many juniors I had uh, at one point in time some 20 people reporting to me at a very young age mm-hmm. so uh, and they were also very senior in age to me they were uh, you know close to some of them were 50 years old I was half their age right. yet I was yeah yet I was uh, uh, you know was uh, instructing them on what to do mm-hmm. so uh, and so all of this, uh, you know, assumes a great uh, significance when you try to understand the theory later, when you do your MBA. So that way, actually uh, doing a job first and later on a, a management degree uh, helps you understand what exactly are you learning? Because otherwise, they're just theories. Right. So here I was able to understand that this particular theory, okay, the organizational behavior theory, this is how you interact with people. What about communication skills? Why do you need communication skills? Because uh, what of uh, what I'd undergone. So it was just the opposite, but helped me understand basically the perspective of those theories. Right. Okay. Um, so another thing that um, I realized is that you started your career back in the 90s. And that was a time when the working women culture wasn't really accepted in our society per se. So did these conflicts give rise to any problems while when you started your professional career? Yeah, so Arushi, actually, yeah, so uh, my work situation wouldn't be a typical work situation for all the working women. Because, uh, you know, we were in a cocooned atmosphere uh, when we joined the Air Force. So the Air Force bases are always cordoned off from the rest of the city. And um, uh, they have a very good security inside. Um, And uh, the discipline in the forces is uh, exceptional. There are are very few, uh, there would be in very minute percentages, any cases of indiscipline because... Uh, in you know the repercussions are really harsh so immediately action is taken and uh, you bear the consequences of your action so which is why people are very particular about discipline so people mm-hmm. get hauled up for uh, coming showing up late basically mm-hmm. so you won't think of doing that in the uh, you know in okay. the corporate world and in the startup world you know, you can't even think of doing that because it's very you know people come in at 10, 11, I've heard instances and they carry on working till 8 or 9 o'clock in the night. But that kind of an atmosphere is not there uh, in the forces. Uh, mm-hmm. And plus so much of security is there. So in terms of uh, the atmosphere for working women, uh, it was exemplary. Uh, very high security. We never had any uh, insecure feelings. Uh, we were always respected. 
uh, the you know we uh, so basically we salute each other so mm-hmm. you know and so jai him every time so uh, you know so it was a very secure environment uh, i would say um and in terms of uh, sexual harassment also there was uh, you know there was no sexual harassment uh, uh, that i uh, was exposed to and uh, hardly heard any cases so uh, i would say it was a very uh, nurturing environment for women and continues to be one right so um just like with a link to the previous question um as if we compare to nowadays um it has become relatively easier for women to join fields that are regarded as unconventional to for them mm-hmm. so um can you tell us a little bit about the changes that you feel have occurred over the years yeah actually uh, arushi if you look back um you know india is changing for the better and it's a very positive outlook for women today and uh, the numbers are only uh, you know improving in terms of how women have been doing um so if you talk about uh, you know uh, earlier days uh, uh, the uh, basically uh, we had uh, you know um, uh, very fewer representation of women in politics but today if you see right from let's say miss uh, nirmala sitaraman who is our finance minister who is earlier defense minister then we have smriti irani ma'am who is our uh, 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 women and child development minister uh, and there are so many other uh, you know political leaders who basically take decisions for india uh, as a country mm-hmm. so uh, you know so the the men in our country uh, are also uh, you know ensuring that women are posted to such uh, are given such posts so not only do you enable but you also execute so that uh, results or actions are uh, there for everyone to see uh, even you know if you take uh, um, the case of our president uh, shrimati dropadi so um, you know she comes from a you know tribal background and uh, she's a woman so uh, you know it is very motivating and inspiring for you know mm-hmm. women like me today to see such iconic figures and uh, within our country if you look at uh, today the startup founders like kiran majumdar shaw right. um so right. earlier actually uh, you wouldn't have seen so many uh, you know uh, basically successful figures but today more and more you're seeing more uh, successful women be it in political arena be it in business field banking has so many women um uh, who are uh, you know who are ceos um so the other day uh, i actually met up with uh, miss uh, uh, mule she is part of aditya birla group uh, i met with jayshree vyas she is the ceo of uh, seva bank um and there are many many such examples uh, among startup founders uh, there is uh, mabel chako also priya sharma um uh, nupur nupur gupta of meera uh, these are all fintech founders basically mm-hmm. and uh, uh, sucharita mukherjee so there are so many examples today of uh, exemplary women um who are you know uh, they are breaking all kinds of barriers today uh, but yet at the same time i would say that the uh, situation remains uh, you know still very challenging so in in terms of women empowerment you see uh, especially after covid the mm-hmm. number of women in the workforce has dropped earlier it was uh, some two years back it was some 21% of women uh, participation in the workforce now it has dipped to 17% because uh, i think because of covid related uh, issues mm-hmm. and uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, representation of women at a senior level which i feel is responsible for uh, women being in the workforce so if you have if you have a man- mandate at a senior level and it helps to have therefore it helps to have women in the senior level because if uh, you, uh, women are more in number at a senior level that mm-hmm. will ensure that uh, women uh, in the middle or the entry level are motivated to basically go up to the level that they see the women leader being at 
Right. Uh, the the woman will also ensure the woman leader will also ensure policies and initiatives which uh, are in, basically they are um, uh, they are uh, you Benefic know uh, women. Yeah. Uh, right. They are uh, women focused basically. Right. They take women into consideration. Mm -hmm. So what? Uh, so the other uh, point of view is that I'm not trying to say that give women concessions. But also, uh, if everybody can understand that, uh, you know, women are different than men, there is no doubt about it. Women are different. But in spite of the difference, uh, you know, can uh, can we have a workplace which basically uh, one is uh, recognizes that they are different and then respects that. Mm. So that doesn't mean giving concessions uh, that... Uh, uh, that only means that so far, because majority has been men, mm -hmm. uh, the policies have been a certain way. So mm -hmm. there was no need for a uh, um, um, uh, maternity policy because they were mostly men. But when women came in, in uh, large numbers, you have to have a maternity policy. And then they realized that maternity policy is not enough because uh, there is the man also, the husband also in the house. We have to have, uh, you know, paternity leave. So, uh, so the thing is, you're not giving really concessions. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're making, uh, you're understanding, first of all, there is a difference. And then making some changes to the policies, which were mostly male-oriented. Mm -hmm. So, if we can just understand this thing, that there are no concessions being given to women. Mm -hmm. It is only because of uh, the, the difference that is there between men and women. And the difference doesn't mean that women at are uh, are at a lower level, uh, you know, or a, are a weaker sex or something like that. They are equal. The only thing is, they have a certain qualities which may not be there for men, and men have certain qualities which may not be there for women. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so there are differences which make them these special men and women. But we should try to nurture these uh, qualities that they have in, instead of trying to suppress these qualities. So if a woman has empathetic qualities, uh, we should try to uh, you know nurture that instead of trying to suppress it down. If she is emotional, that's also a great sign, mm -hmm. because ultimately at a workplace you deal with humans and you deal with emotions. You you are not dealing with robots, with, where where there are no emotions at workplace. So having emotions at workplace makes it a place where you can bond with others. You can even make friends. For life and beyond so and if you have friends or if you develop these bonds it helps you to be more productive mm -hmm. you wouldn't like to go back to a workplace where uh you know you really don't like those people you would like to go to a workplace where you like to hang around with those people every day you would like to hang around with them beyond the work time so which is why emotions are important being empathetic is important today and uh so if you are a woman and empathetic uh, that's great. You don't need to tone it down. But yes, uh, you have to obviously maintain a balance. You can't go overboard. And uh, similarly, being empathetic shouldn't always be associated with the with a, with a woman. There are men who are empathetic as well. So, uh, you know, so these qualities should be gender agnostic. They shouldn't be like uh, somebody is empathetic, they are feminine. I think uh, we should not look at that but also consider what is important for a job. If it is a job for caring, like uh, like in nursing or hospitality or uh, even for a leader where empathy is important, then in which case it makes to uh, make sense to have a leader, man and a woman who is empathetic. But if it requires uh, industry to be more, uh, you know, uh, where emotions are not involved so much, then in which case it can take a back seat and other things uh, can you know uh, take the uh, basically the front seat so those are some of the things i would mention that um, uh, we have seen a change so in terms of uh, let's say senior leadership also the number of women at at the top the number of ceos is around uh, you know maybe 4.7 percent which is not even five percent for india uh, so which is a you know, a, a very minuscule number, which is really sad to know. And then women in the board level are around 17%. Uh, women CFOs are some 3.9%. Uh, 
so these are very depressing figures uh, and uh, typically what is being seen is that women from the middle level onwards are falling off uh, they are falling off the grid uh, they are leaving the workforce so i think it is time that india incorporated uh, had a look at uh, you know what are we doing or what can we do better so that the women uh, are in the workforce women do get promoted to senior positions and uh, because today one in 10 women are likely to be a woman leader right so uh, though they are three out of 10 in the workforce but only one out of 10 will get to be the woman leader so which is actually not a nice number to have um and uh, so the the good part is women at the entry level are uh, they, they are uh, you know they uh, are uh, in good number but uh, then after marriage and after having a child then they drop off so i think uh, if there are uh, policies which are implemented which basically ensure that you know maternity paternity leave is given proper care arrangements for the kids are provided flexible work arrangements are provided uh, also um, arrangements such that uh, you, you can come back to work and not suffer in your career or when you come back from uh, a break proper training to you is given also leadership trainings also exposure to women leaders um there would be some of the things um that we can do to ensure that women do not drop off mm. um so there is also uh, uh, you know uh, the thing about uh, uh, like uh, at a relatively young age uh, apparently it is uh, some 42% of women graduates are there so which is a very good figure of india compared to uh, even the developed countries like germany germany has close to i think 38% of women graduates but india has 42% which is better than uh, i think U- uk which is uh, uh, and also uh, france and germany and us so we are much better in terms of women graduates but later on uh, somehow our women are uh, you know somehow uh, after joining they are dropping off so mm-hmm. if uh, we can have these uh, policies implemented and so that's the other thing uh, one is having policies so there are a lot of government policies which have come into place um, you know recently so there's uh, there was the campaign of Be- uh, beti padhao beti bachao there was um, uh, also the uh, you know um, the uh, uh, basically there's a investment um, scheme for girls which is there um uh, which basically helps to uh, ensure that uh, you have a good sum of money at the end of that particular period so uh, so and there are many you know scholarship schemes which are launched by the government but i think uh, one thing which uh, is not happening today is the uh, you know the proper implementation of these policies so the policies are there that women can take advantage of even for let's say women entrepreneurs uh, there are capability building programs today uh, which are being implemented there are uh, you know whole whole host of uh, efforts which are on but i think uh, somewhere in the implementation phase uh, in the implementation phase uh, there are these uh, challenges because of which women are not able to uh, enroll in these programs and women are not able to take advantage of these programs so i think uh, if uh, you know uh, an effort is made as to how many women were able to take part in these initiatives um, you know what is the feedback from the women who took part in these uh, initiatives of the programs of the government of the, pri- the even the private agencies uh, what is the feedback from the women coming in what did they like what did they hate about the program what about the rest of the women why were not they not so if there is a proper uh, mm. understanding which is done that what happens after these policies are uh, are launched so if uh, and then how about uh, you know giving encouragement and incentives to officers or the people who implement these programs if you are doing well can we know about these people these officers 
who are ensuring that uh, women schemes are doing well uh, are they felicitated uh, are they made heroes and heroines basically so uh, so uh, idea would be that people who are doing a good job of women empowerment should be brought into limelight and um, uh, also the programs uh, they need a better execution i would say right so uh before we move forward um i just have a curious question that i wanted to ask you so as we know that you have worked in diverse fields uh, ranging from the army corporate entrepreneurship and startups which one would you would be your favorite out of these and uh, why right right yeah so uh, arushi yeah thanks for pointing that out i have a very unusual background um and uh, you know i i would say my favorite happens to be entrepreneurship uh, also because uh, you know in each of these stages of my life as i was in the air force served for served there for 5 years as a flight lieutenant got my release then uh, went on to work in the corporate last i worked was with infosys uh, then i started the entrepreneurial stint where i have been focusing on loan genie and now see, recently pivoted to inspire um so i think uh, in all of these uh, i think my favorite has to be entrepreneurship because uh, and the reason is that um, uh, in all of the earlier stages i was you know uh, uh, you know i learned different skills so in the air force i learned about time management about uh, process being process oriented how it helps of uh, making do with scarce resources being flexible adaptable when i moved to the corporate i again learn to be uh, flexible but this was in a slightly different context this was uh, being flexible with people so in the army in the air force was being flexible with uh, you know most of the times with situations where you had uh, no control over your situation sometimes you were put in a hard situation and you had to deal with it like life threatening situations like war like floods like earthquake uh, so I have been exposed to some of these uh, situations and it wasn't as uh, dark uh, as uh, you know it may seem it was a lot of fun uh, being in the forces but uh, uh, here in the corporate you were mostly dealing with people a lot rather than situations because your atmosphere around you is uh, you know is not life threatening and it is the people that you have to deal with uh, so had to learn to be flexible with people not be uh, very very rigid uh, yet at the same time when i was with infosys last was with infosys i learned how to you know how integrity and ethics can really propel you forward as as with the case of infosys uh, they are they are a very successful company so uh, the uh, you know the emphasis on integrity and ethics which was there in the forces continued within the corporate as well so uh, so and then finally in the entrepreneurship again uh, you uh, are learning a lot of things the comfort of the corporate has been taken away uh, you know in entrepreneurship so you are completely on your own there are no processes you have to actually come to a stage and it would be wonderful if you come to a stage where you can set your processes uh, because that means that your uh, uh, people have confidence in you and now you can set processes for others so uh, even to reach that place to set processes for others is a critical one so i would say uh, you know the current phase where i'm building inspire this community of women uh, where i'm trying to empower these women through uh, you know various initiatives that uh, either are in in the works or are already being implemented so that is very satisfying for me and i wouldn't exchange it for anything in the world so the current phase is the most happening phase is the phase i really love right okay so as you just mentioned about your two startups uh, lonjini and inspire so let's just talk a little bit about lonjini first which um, is a fintech startup so can you tell us a little bit about it and what it does right so uh, uh it's a loan genie uh, is a, a lending fintech which basically looks at giving these very uh, small loans or sachet loans to uh, millennials mm. who have low or no credit scores mm. so 
last uh, September, uh, I was fortunate enough to be selected for Financial Alliance for Women Hackathon, uh, which was supported, which is supported by uh, Citibank, HSBC, IFC. And we, uh, the Inspire idea that was selected was amongst the only uh, 15 selected across the world. And we were the only entry from India. So that actually made me confident that I'm on the right track to solve some of the challenges that a women's economy faces in India. And if you look at it, uh, the you know there are 65% of women in India who are financially excluded. Right. And uh, close to 80% of Indian women have very poor uh, financial literacy. Basically, they are financially illiterate. And uh, uh, if you look at other figures also in terms of insurance, in terms of... Uh, uh, life insurance, health insurance, the numbers for women are abysmal. And uh, even the retirement planning, which is being done, uh, some studies showed that it was about 2% for women. Okay. So basically, this clearly is a, a huge gap which exists in the Indian ecosystem where close to 50%, close to 600 million uh, women are there in India. But yet all these uh, glaring uh, gaps exist so I you know then I decided looking at these huge challenges looking at the validation of my idea at uh, the hackathon I decided to start focusing on this sector and uh, try to see how we can address the financial literacy part of it so Inspire basically looks at today um, uh, you know uh, being a one-stop finance app for women where uh, women can have access to financial planning, uh, to investments, to um, uh, so uh, and also non-financial services as well. So and but to start with, we have started with a community of uh, it's a women-only uh, online offline community for women on WhatsApp, and the uh, basically the uh, access to this community can be had through WhatsApp links which are shared by me. We are very particular about who we get on the platform, even with women. We uh, authenticate these women and uh, get them on board uh, because uh, we uh, want to create a safe and secure environment for women to share things openly without inhibition, without hesitation. And I'm seeing that happen uh, as, uh, you know, as uh, I've been working on um, building this community from November onwards. So, uh, Arushi will be very happy to know that I was able to take this community from 0 to 450 women in a matter of just three weeks. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that was uh, quite amazing even for me because I was thinking that, you know, how many women will join. But uh, it was amazing to see the interest from women uh, from all uh, areas. They, they were college girls. There are uh, corporate women today. There are entrepreneurial leaders there uh, and their homemakers. So because I believe there's a huge potential in homemakers, sometimes uh, they, uh, you know, they uh, have babies and they stop working. Uh, they, you know, uh, st you know, they become homemakers. Sometimes um, they have been homemakers all their lives and they have developed wonderful skills, maybe in baking, maybe in embroidery. And these skills are just lying untapped. But today, mm -hmm. thanks to the technology, we can actually tap all these skills and we can ensure that uh, they're beautiful embroidered purses or embroidered uh, cushion covers or um, the dresses. They can come to the market and, you know, some other woman or a man can uh, use them in their house or use them uh, or wear them. So the idea is that, uh, you know, women can help women. And uh, our vision with Inspire is that we want to empower women to live life on their terms. So this is not living on anybody's terms. This is not living on what, uh, you know, your father says or your brother or your husband or whosoever says how you should live your life. This is to live life on your terms. And, uh, uh, the, uh, and this is for obviously adult women. So obviously when you're a kid, you, <laughs> you basically... Listen to uh, your father definitely, and uh, uh, do listen to your mother and take into take that into consideration. But I'm talking about adult women 
Mm -hmm. I'm saying that, uh, you know, can we have a world where women are empowering women and uh, basically to uh, be financially independent and also, uh, you know, once you become financially independent, you are able to take many life decisions for yourself, which otherwise you wouldn't have had the courage to take it. So many a times, you know, women, uh, uh, the girls tell me that uh, if uh, there, there were some girls in my class who were married off. So, uh, and then there were some graduate students telling me that uh, if they don't get a job, uh, most probably uh, they will end up being married. So, uh, you know, and the getting married at an early age and then um, dealing with the life situations throughout your life, being dependent on somebody is a different thing versus when you are independent. So uh, today, you know, I would say for women uh, that uh, you should be independent throughout your life. So this is, uh, this is what, this is one message that I will leave all the men and women on the podcast uh, who are watching that, um, you know, it is very critical for a woman to be economically productive and it is very critical for her to be independent throughout her life. So even if, uh, you know, she's at home, try to make sure that you plan your life in such a way so that you are able to retire at an early age and you have that kitty that you have that money in the bank lying somewhere and fixed deposits or whatever investments that you have so that you're able to live life your way and you don't have to force yourself to live life uh, that you know somebody else wants for you so that would be one uh, message on this women's day i would you know love to leave the women on the podcast with right okay so um about Inspire, as much as I gathered from what you said, that it is um, an online, offline community of women where they're empowered um, to be independent. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. So, um, what was your inspiration behind creating Inspire? And are there any stories of women that you can share with us today? Right, right. Ashi, that's a great question. Uh, so Inspire, uh, actually, I think uh, the motivation for Inspire has been there throughout my uh, you know life stages because at each of these stages when I was in the college looking for jobs and internships, it was at that point in time definitely difficult to get uh, jobs and internships, especially if you are in a small town. And... Um, uh, I was uh, at one point in time in a small town, uh, that's my hometown, Bareilly, and I was trying to get a job and it was very difficult to come across uh, good companies which would pay really well where you would have good career, not job, but career prospects. And you had to come to a big city in order to do that. But today, thanks to technology and uh, no thanks to COVID, but this is actually, COVID has facilitated this, that we have uh, today... Uh, this remote work option also available. So you can be in a two-tier city today and be working for the big four consulting or you know any other big company which is out there, the Infosys, the TCS or the Wipro of the world. But earlier that wasn't available. So that actually those challenges, then when I joined the corporate, uh, again, at uh, the time I joined the corporate, I think uh, the percentage of women was around 24% uh, when I joined the corporate. Now it is 17%. So uh, then also even 24% is not a majority. So you are in a minority. There are very few senior women leaders. I didn't know anything about mentoring. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I didn't take up mentoring at all uh, as, uh, you know, in the, in the corporate. And I encourage women to take up mentoring, by the way. So, uh, so uh, those gaps in the corporate, then in the entrepreneurship area also, today uh, only some... Uh, you know, 13% of women are there as women entrepreneurs uh, in the Indian ecosystem. So again, you're a minority. And uh, the if you talk about uh, how, how, you know, funding for women entrepreneurs, that is also abysmal. That is also, uh, maybe, you know, it has uh, slightly increased from last year. I think it's increased up to 13%. 
and uh, women entrepreneurs have been able to raise uh, close to um, around i think uh, yeah so it's uh, uh, the figures are uh, like globally they have been able to raise some 3 billion dollars globally uh, and uh, in india i think uh, that figure would be uh, still very low but uh, yeah so so close to 13% of the capital has been raised by uh, you know women uh, founders so even here in entrepreneurship there are so many challenges that uh, a woman founder has basically so keeping that all of that in view i actually thought of a, a platform where we could address these challenges for women and from a woman's point of view because i'm a woman founder i i have personally undergone i feel i have i know the pain and so which is why uh, the product that we build the features that it will have it will have a woman focused approach right so i i don't say i have experienced all of the pain but i would say that um, being uh, have having experienced that pain i am now more empathetic to women and uh, also understand women uh, better so which is why i think uh, you know uh, if there is anybody uh, who should be having a go at tackling this problem of women i think i am better positioned that way uh, so and uh, also have been very passionate about uh, empowering women uh, so i have uh, very good examples around me like uh, like one is i admire uh, you know people like nirmala sitaraman ma'am i admire uh, smriti irani ma'am Uh, then there is a uh, our president uh, dropadi uh, murmu ma'am so all of these uh, leaders uh, kiran majumdar shaw uh, indra nui all these uh, you know fabulous figures uh, indra gandhi was another of them uh, then if you come to my immediate circles uh, so uh, you know my relatives uh, 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 there's a bua of mine uh, who i really admire she's she was a scientist earlier on now she is a, a you know a adjunct professor uh, then my mother she has been an amazing uh, pillar of strength so even in my darkest mo- moments she was the one who basically supported me so uh, you know i have a, a, a admiration for her she's a homemaker but uh, you know i uh, have seen so many good qualities in her that i hope to incorporate of being resilient having that grit uh, of not giving up of being positive and then i have my daughters so my elder daughter is 19 years old and she's in college in hong kong and my younger daughter is 16 years old and she's uh, she's also in, she's she's in a school in uh, hong kong again so my daughters again are also my inspiration uh, because uh, you know they they show me qualities that i can develop of being uh, you know of empathy of uh, being kind i think uh, you know i i derive these qualities of uh, also uh, you know uh, there there's also something called uh, silent leadership so you sometimes are not very vocal but at the same time you take concrete steps in order to uh, you know uh, basically be a leader you know uh, take on you know unconventional steps which basically ensure that the uh, you know that there is a solution to whatever concern that you're facing so all of these uh, women around me my friends a lot of my friends uh, you know people in the community amazing leaders in the fintech world uh, there are so many amazing women who are there so which who keep inspiring me so i think uh, you know uh, these are some of the factors which have led me to look at uh, inspire so um, there's also been my one of my mentors shalini warrior so i think i admire her also greatly uh, for the the kind of uh, you know um, effortless poise and the uh, hard work she puts in she doesn't ask for any uh, you know leeways basically as a woman and she shows her competence so uh, you know people like ravina rai who are there uh, who's a part of npci she's an npci leader so all of these are role models which basically make you feel that uh, you know you can uh, do something about the gaps that exist for women and there is hope for us so through inspire we hope to work on all of these challenges and uh, ensure that these women 
uh, if they are even if they are from colleges or they are uh, in the corporate or entrepreneurs or homemakers how can we empower them so recently actually um, there was a, a woman from uh, a woman entrepreneur from uh, mysore uh, that i got in touch with through uh, the thai women basically network and we both were the finalists at thai mysore uh, pitch contest and uh, she joined inspire and uh, her name is pooja somshekhar and uh, luckily she, unfortunately she got business on the platform and uh, she has shared a testimonial also uh, about the same which i have shared on linkedin but uh, incidents like this uh, make you uh, you know believe uh, so much in in the platform that i'm creating uh, make you have faith in, in the inspire uh, community that i'm building and uh, there they've been um, also i i was talking the other day to uh, another of the inspire members and she uh, has told me that uh, how she got uh, she she works for big four consulting firm and she's shared how she got uh, beauty tips uh, on the platform how she got career advice on how to deal with her coworker on the platform uh, there has been um, very uh, this is a senior leader from um, one of the uh uh you know uh, very good companies uh, in um, consulting again so she also the senior leader also shared uh, on the platform itself she shared as to how inspire has helped her uh, you know because she had an injury earlier on but uh, being a part of the health group she was motivated by the posts that were being shared on the platform to uh, start exercising again so you know so in uh, in a small way inspire is actually making a difference uh, which may not be very evident to people uh, mm -hmm. outside but uh, it is uh, affecting women it is inspiring them motivating them and i'm seeing also a lot of interest come in from men folks as well so uh, you know a lot of the folks uh, who have uh, 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 like girl child basically i've seen them uh, coming up to me and talking to me and telling me that uh, you know uh, how how much do they appreciate this particular initiative of mine there have been um, uh, people who you know of course uh, have uh, wives who are working who understand what i'm trying to do here when i you know i'm focusing on the corporate because corporate women do have a family life so they also have appreciated a very senior leader recently was appreciating that because his wife is also working he was appreciating how you know this would help women in the corporate and uh, so a lot of help is coming in from empathetic men also but at the same time men are also expressing that sometimes they face um, challenges from uh, you know uh, men in the workforce where uh, they are men in the workforce ask them that why are you giving these concessions to women uh, and uh, i are you really being fair so in which case actually this senior leader quoted that uh, uh, you know this is equity where uh, people one person has already al always um, you know been on a uh, you know maybe one person has a cycle and the other person has a, a mobile and the let's say the third person has a sports car so if you try to have a race between these three people who do you expect will you know go fastest obviously the one with the sports car will go the fast fastest mm -hmm. um so uh, so uh, the point here is that uh, you try to understand the different backgrounds or the different circumstances people come from and then accordingly provide those support system or those uh, it, that that impetus to that particular person to ensure their success not like uh, say that okay yes uh, you know the race is on now go and see let's see who wins so obviously the person with the best uh, of the tools of the you know technologies will win but what if they they nev they've never had that beautiful smartphone they've never had that beautiful technology with them they are they have an impediment they can't be on the same level as the rest of them so which is why actually this year's theme really resonates with what's going on in the world today uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we should embrace e equity we should not look at uh, you know the world is equal no it is not equal for everybody people have uh, are facing challenges today i may be in a situation which is uh, 
uh like i may be the top 2% of uh, india's women population who's had the best of education or the best of opportunities but what about the 98% so there are women who say that um, um we are all equal but uh, those women forget that it is only 2% of the women who are equal what about the 98% who are uh, you know facing challenges at home and these challenges can come from anywhere they can come from the women themselves because sometimes because of the society that you've grown up in you yourself don't have the confidence in yourself you yourself say no i can't handle this you need somebody a third party coming in uh, you know somebody a mentor a guide or coach or uh, somebody coming in and telling you no you have the capability go do this work so women themselves hold themselves back the society could be the one their family could be another their workplace could be another so but in spite of all of these challenges i would say today there is immense hope there are ways and means if you have the uh, the uh, basically the spirit in you that i am going to better myself there are avenues available today that you can make use of uh, and uh, which which is why it's a very positive world that we women are in today and the situation is only improving but at the same time we have a responsibility each one of us has a responsibility as a woman and even as a man to make it better for the next generation to and so which is why we must act every minute of the day to ensure that there is equity there uh, you know that uh, uh, women and are being enabled uh, the people who have disabilities are being uh, enabled people uh, with uh, you know the third gender uh, are being the other genders are being enabled so basically they should ensure that there is no discrimination right i think you started a wonderful community and i'm sure it's going to reach great heights um yeah i would uh, you know i would love for uh, iit roorkee uh, uh, the girl students as well as the alumni uh to join i would also request the it roorkee men who are watching this their families uh, if there are women in their families their children uh their sisters their wives if they could join inspire uh, that would be wonderful and the way to join inspire is uh, they can ping me on uh, my number which is 9108615666 and uh, connect with me and uh, also by the way uh, you know uh, please uh, follow me like uh, comment on linkedin i'm there on linkedin as kanchan08 on uh, twitter as kanchan dwivedi and uh, on instagram and facebook as kanchan dwivedi19 so i would love for uh, you know interact uh, interacting with the iit roorkee uh, uh, students as well as the alumni and thank you so much it is an absolute honor to be here today to be talking to somebody as brilliant as you arushi and i think okay. you are also one of these girl leaders that we have today and from whom we expect much uh, in the years to come thank you so much thank you so much for that um so last lastly we'll just end the discussion um by just asking that is there any advice that you have for all the college students who will be watching this podcast especially the women um in regards to startups entrepreneurship uh, and something um simple just as voicing their opinion right right so yeah absolutely i have lots of uh, advice that i can share i would uh, my advice to uh, the girl students even to uh, the male students would be that uh, uh follow your passion and follow your interest uh and uh, you know i feel that it is very important to be uh, become aware of what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are and therefore choose a uh area uh, basically where your strengths are and uh, typically that would be the area where you know your interest would also lie so uh, focus on that area rather than trying to go for uh, the most wanted areas or the most happening or the most cool areas of the industries so uh, you know in your life uh, go for the things 
uh, which basically look very interesting, which you're really passionate about uh, exploring or doing or executing. So that would be my advice, number one. And uh, the other advice regarding entrepreneurship would be uh, today, uh, you know, ever since Startup India movement started in 2016 by our Prime Minister Sri Modi, uh, we have had uh, an amazing increase in the number of entrepreneurs thanks to the wonderful ecosystem being created. So from uh, close to 5,000 entrepreneurs in 2016, today we have 80,000 entrepreneurs uh, in 2023. And that is all possible due to uh, this immense uh, fillip provided by the campaign, uh, Startup India, Stand Up India. So I would say if you have entrepreneurial ambitions, go for it. Uh, you know, there are many courses being offered, even in IIT Roorkee. I heard uh, the director, um, uh, Shri Pant, uh, he, he talked about uh, how they're offering, I think, a one year off to explore their uh, right. basically ideas and you can come back. So that's a wonderful opportunity. I, I would say, you know, the uh, IT Rurki is, is an amazing place to explore your entrepreneurial ambitions. You also have a wonderful alumni, uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurs out there. So, uh, you know, please go, go ahead and touch base with them and uh, seek their advice. And if you want to jump into entrepreneurship, this is the time. Do not uh, go in for, uh, uh, you know, any job or, you know, things like that. Straight away, if you have to go for entrepreneurship, uh, you know, this is the best time. The other thing is, why am I uh, giving this advice is also because uh, in the initial years uh, is, is the time that uh, you can experiment, you can fail, and you can learn a lot. So uh, when you are an entrepreneur, you're taking care of all the functions that are there. You're taking care of um, the, uh, basically, uh, the idea generation, uh, then the product development, then uh, the, uh, you basically app development, uh, which is happening, the launch, the marketing of the same, uh, the consumer adoption, whether the consumer will adapt to it or not. You're taking care of finances, um, so uh, you're taking care of legal. So uh, from one end to the other, you're taking care of everything. Whereas if you go into a job, you will be asked to do a, only a specific thing. So that, that kind of experience of being told to do a specific thing, where you're not utilizing your brain cells that much as you're uh, you know, utilizing your brain cells when you are on your own, where there are no processes, where you have to make it on your own. So the kind of learning or the kind of failures and so, by the way, there is no success without failures. If there's somebody who tells you that they have succeeded every time, they're lying. Uh, the only thing is the failures are not evident to people. So the, uh, the they would have become successful and everybody notices only the success part of it. But you fail majority of the time. And because you fail majority of the time, you learn what not to do. And so because, uh, you know, one learns what not to do, they become successful and people only notice that real little tip at the top where the person is successful, but they haven't noticed the, you know, the hundreds of hours, which went to make this success. They only see, oh, oh she only is successful. Uh, the two minutes of fame. But what they don't see is that amount of hard work that person has done, uh, the amount of toil, the, the hundred, the 200 or the thousand hours of work that person has put in to be there. Mm -hmm. So uh, people think it's very easy, but no, it's not very easy. Success is all hard work and, uh, you know, it is hard work. It is smart work and being at the right time at the right moment, all these things. Uh, and of course the, the right people are important. So it's very important to have right people around you. So ensure that because the, the, the six people around you that you interact with every day will ensure your success. So it is very important to maintain relations you cannot be successful on your own. You have to have the support of uh, the people around you. And uh, it is uh, not one person who's successful. When an entrepreneur becomes successful, it takes a whole village. All people around uh, that particular entrepreneur, their family, the friends, the professional circle, uh, the industry, basically, you know, so it is 
um everybody rooting for you that makes you successful so nobody should think that they are successful because of them it is because of uh, the people who have supported them uh, the opportunities that have been given to them uh, and uh, so so it it is important for people to also look at uh, maintaining and growing relations so that would be the third advice so first would be to uh, you know uh, uh, basically go for your passion second would be to you know if you are looking at entrepreneurship jump into entrepreneurship uh, and don't think about it and the third advice would be uh, develop relations uh, with people around you. you you if you may be super smart super brilliant anything but you can't succeed uh, till uh, you know you have people with complementary skills around you because there's no way you'll have all the skills uh, if you may you may be brilliant in maths but you need a person who is brilliant in marketing next to you to make sure that whatever equations that you're coming up with goes out to the world so so basically it's a you know it's a world of give and take and uh, you know you should uh, focus on building your relations and developing and growing them right that was great advice so thank you so much for joining us today ma'am it was lovely talking to you thank you so much yeah thank you arushi and uh, you know it's uh, always wonderful interacting with iit roorkee i've had a wonderful experience at the e summit uh, you know amazing people uh, you know i was with uh, shashank there was kunal uh, and uh, also dev was also there uh, so uh, amazing uh, you know uh, people at iit roorkee uh, the faculty also uh, has uh, been quite amazing i think i've interacted with uh, the director uh, mr khan and uh, also rajat sir uh, professor joshi so uh, and uh, you know um, uh, i think a um, uh, lot of other faculty also so pretty amazing faculty so uh, it's great being at uh, you know iit roorkee and being at the uh, podcast so thank you so much thank you